Hey everybody, uh, Joe Stedman. Now, if you know anything about me and my reviews and my game preferences, you know that my favorite game is Advanced Squad Leader. I talk about it all the time. But today I thought uh, I'd talk about my second favorite game, and that's the game Upfront. Upfront is a out of production game from Avalon Hill, the old Avalon Hill, and it's currently not in production. It's um, quite pricey on the internet. I do have a copy of it. Um, the original thing. But what I'm going to show you today is a homemade copy that I made um, using uh, a printer overseas and uh, I'll just show you everything and explain it and I'm going to teach you how to play the game just real basically. So that's Upfront by Avalon Hill. Let me show you what comes in the box. Alright, so what I got here first is I got my copy of the rules. Now, there's the... Uh, I I scanned my copy of the rules, it's in the other room, but then on Board Game Geek, uh, a man has gone through and redid the rules because up, the, up front, the original upfront rules are very convoluted. Um, I personally found them difficult to understand. And so he redid the rules and made them a little more clear, put, uh, incorporated any errata and things like that. That's the first thing I'd do if you wanted to consider doing this is print out a new copy of the rules, the files on Board Game Geek. So here's my rules. Next, here is the cards. The upfront is a card game. World War II themed. Um, and it's been called the Advanced Squad Leader card game. So what you have here, so what you have here, you have the action deck, which is this, and I'll go through that. And then each of the nations has a deck of cards. Here is the German deck. And here is the American deck. Um, besides the Americans and Germans, there's I got a Japanese deck, a British deck, a Russian deck, there's also an Italian deck, and a Greek deck. Uh, I have all of those. Now what I've done with my cards. My wife almost always plays the Americans. She loves this game, plays it with me. So she, I put them in file protectors. But here's like the back of the cards. There's the American flag on these, but I put the Americans in the file protectors. All right. And here's the Germans, uh, the back of the German cards. I went with the uh, battle flag for the Germans. <laughs> Not too politically correct, but. So there's the German cards. And I'll show a close-up of those in a minute. So you have two basic kind of cards in the game. You have your personality cards, which are these. Then you have the action cards, and I'll go over those. So that's the cards. <clears throat> and then this big box I have, I've got all the counters. Now, on Board Game Geek, you're also going to be able to find a file that has uh, artwork, re redid artwork for all the counters. I took those and printed those out on a heavy cardstock. And then I took some worthless Scrabble pieces. One of the, I hate this game, but the pieces are perfect. So I took some Scrabble pieces. I cut those out and I attached the uh, counters to the Scrabble pieces to make big thick uh, counters. So there's my counters. There's everything you need. So really it's just a card game with counters. Um, let me go in and zoom in and show you how to play the game. And then after that I'll tell you about my thoughts and then also about what I think about making your own copy. The ethics of that. Alright. So here we have uh, a basic setup of Upfront. These uh, are, without taking too much strategy in mind, I threw the cards down following the rules for setup. And this is what a game will look like as you're playing. You're going to have your personality cards laid out on the table. And then you're going to have your draw deck over here, which would not be face up. It would be face down. Whatever. All right. And then you're going to have uh, groups. So let's look at the Americans. The Americans are on this side of the table. They've got three groups. Group A. Group B and Group C. On the opposite side, you have the Germans group, and they're always going to correspond A, B, and C. And in each group, you're going to have some dudes, and each card represents a guy. So let's zoom in on a guy and kind of talk about what's in that card. All right. So here we got Private McElroy, um, basic American guy. Um, his morale is 3, his panic number is 5, and his KIA number is 8. I'll explain that later. He's got a 
be a, a regular M1 Grand rifle. And you have the chart that shows you uh, the firepower at each range. His close combat value is a 5. His break, his, his break number for his guns is a 6. And then that's his repair value for the gun. So I've got everything here. This is his card number on the bottom. Just so you the or that, that's not his card number on the bottom. Up here is his card number number 4. And on the side there, that's for when he is broken. And I'll explain that. So, you know, you got different guys. This guy over here. Uh, he's an assistant squad leader, so you see that uh, he says ASL on him, which is kind of funny. Um, here's the squad leader. All right, uh, here's your, where's the BAR guy? Here's a BAR, you know, the automatic rifle guy. He's got a little bit more powerful uh, statistics on his weapons. And then if we go over to the Germans, More or less the same thing, except for the one exception is you got this guy with the uh, the MG34. He's got two different values. He's got a bracketed value, which is a little bit not uh, as powerful as the the normal value. And what that means is, if it's the bracketed value, means he's firing it on his own. If you assign someone to to be his crewman, so let's say I make I take a counter here and I mark this guy. It costs an action, but at the beginning of the game you can do it for free. Um, this crewman here can now assist this guy, and so they're kind of linked. He can't use his rifle, but now he is crewing this machine gun. Now the guy at the machine gun can use the much more powerful values. All right, and it's less likely to break and everything else. So it's almost almost always you're going to want to have that machine gun crewed. So, all right, up front is uh, played in scenarios, and each scenario will have different objectives. This is we're just going to show. I'm going to show you how to play on the basic. Uh, first scenario. The first scenario, the object is to get at least four men to relative to range four and to be in some type of terrain that will protect you. And so I need to talk about different things uh, to make you understand the victory conditions. First thing let's talk about is terrain. Right now these guys are all in the open. Uh, each group of men is at the farthest they can be. They're at zero. He's at zero and he's at zero. The magic number is five. Five is the closest you can get to each other. So his range is zero, his range is zero. So the relative range, uh, which is important in this game, is by adding the ranges together. So if you take zero, which is this marker here, you can see the rifle sight with the guy that's real far away. If he moves forward, he'll go to relative range one. And you'll see the guy got a little closer. So now his range is one and their relative range to each other is one. But if he also moved forward, he's at one, he's at one, but now their relative range is added together at two. Two. So the relative range is two, and that's important because if you look at the the weapons, uh, as they get closer, well, this guy's got a Thompson machine gun, submachine gun, so it's not very good. But this guy at relative range two, he can fire at you. And the machine gun, especially uh, the closer you get, the more deadly it is. So they're at relative range one, and they're also, I'm sorry, they're relative range two. Whereas uh, firing diagonals allowed, as long as the, these guys here. This group here is considered to be adjacent to that group there because well, they're diagonally adjacent. So he has one and he's zero, so their relative range is also one. These are two, these are one. The guy way over there, you have to subtract one. So he is one, he is a zero, but then you subtract one because they're not across from each other. They're one space over, so their relative range would still be zero. So you could technically fire from here to there if you had the weapon capable of doing so. But right now they can't. So these guys are both at relative range 1. As we get closer and closer, you go to relative range uh, 2, then 3. See how much bigger the guy's getting in the sight? To eventually 4, and then 5. Relative range 5. I mean, you're, you're basically right next to each other. Now, the only way that you could ever get to a 5 on your thing is if this guy was at 0. Because you have to imagine... Uh, that they're going to butt up to each other once they get to five. Once they get to five. So if this guy was at one, this guy could never get to five. He, the most he could go to is four. They're actually touching each other at this point. They're right there adjacent. You never can. This is considered blocking. So the Germans would be blocking these guys from going farther. But now these guys are at range four. So they're at range four with four men. So they could win if they get terrain in front of them. If there's no terrain in front of them, it's considered to be open terrain. And the back of each card is open terrain. So if we go through our action cards, let me just find a card that's got some terrain on it. Here we go. Here's some brush. 
if through play uh, card play you're able to get some terrain in front of you that has a negative modifier, see that negative one for brush? Now these guys would automatically win because they meet the victory conditions for scenario one. They're at range four, they've got some type of terrain that causes a negative modifier with four men that are not broken. Alright, so let's back up and talk about how the game works. On your turn, each group that you have, so I've got three groups as the Americans, Davey here, he has three groups as the Germans. Right Dave? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I get one action per group. Now there's multiple things I can do per group. Uh, not as many as you would think, it's not as complicated, don't let me get you nervous thinking it's too complicated. But your basic actions are to move or to fire. Now to move, you have to play a move card. So you're going to have a hand of cards. Each country has a different amount of cards based on uh, you know, nationality or whatever, and that's in the rules. So you have a basic... So one action that you can do is move. If you play a move card on your group, you would play it up here in front of them. You play move. So they started off in open, now they're running through the open. Alright, so that plus one on them is a bad thing. A minus is a good thing. But a plus one means now that the Germans, when they shoot at these guys, they're going to get plus one to their uh, chance to hurt you. So they, as soon as you play the move card, though, you flip this over to the next range. So he's at one. So that's one thing that you can do. If you're already moving on your turn, then you can play a uh, terrain. So now these guys move forward and they found some brush. Mm -hmm. So you remove the move card and now they're in the brush. Alright? So that's how movement works. Now you can also move laterally, which means putting this back. If you move forward, you if you play your card like this, you move forward and you move this. But if say you wanted to move sideways, you could actually turn this, if you play your move card sideways, this one says forward on it, but don't worry about that right now. If you play your move card sideways, you're moving laterally, which just means you have to pretend uh, that you're moving left to right, because the only way, but you're not changing your position, like moving over there, moving, you're just moving within your area, left to right, looking for terrain, because the only way that you can play a terrain card is if you have a movement card down. It can be a lateral move so that on a subsequent turn you can play move. Now why would you want to do that and not go forward? Well let's say that you're blocked like it was over here or you don't want to get closer to that machine gun and you don't want to stay in the open so you play move sideways. You can also play your movement card upside down which means you're retreating so you'd put this at a zero if you did that. So that's move. Move is pretty simple. Terrain is pretty simple. You can play a terrain as long as there's a movement card down. This one is a minus one for brush. Uh, one thing that you can also do for an action is you can try to entrench. In entrenching, what entrenching does is basically the guys dig in. If you're successful uh, with these new design cards, you just turn this card sideways in front of you, the terrain card, and now it says entrenched, which is a minus two to get shot at, so it's really hard. The way entrenching works is you're going to have this big stack of cards over here, and they're not supposed to be face up, so they're supposed to look like this. If you attempt to entrench, you just flip over the top card. This top right number is the random number. If it's a zero, which it just happens to be, you're success, you, uh, you are successful in your entrenching attempt. So he's successful. He gets to entrench. The card deck is the, uh, the way it would drive the game. This scenario is a three-deck game. So once you go through this deck three times, the game is over with if no one's already reached their victory conditions. Um, so three decks. And I have a counter that will show you what deck you're in. So deck one, deck two, then deck three, so you'll know. And if you either, if you're already, if you're close to winning, you might want to try to, if you're currently winning, you might want to flip through the cards as fast as you can. Do any action you can to burn through the deck. Or you might want to conserve cards. It's a card management, you know, you, you, depending on your strategy. Because if you don't get the automatic victory conditions, you get victory conditions for each man based on what range he's in is a multiplier. So each of these guys is worth four points because they're at relative range four. Four, eight, 12, 16 points right here. So they got 16 points for these guys. These, and as long as they're not broken. If they're broken like this, you turn them sideways, you knock them into new style cards. Um, in the old game, you flip them over, but in these ones, you knock them. They don't get victory points. So four, these guys are relative range one, one, two, three, four more points, you know. So every enemy that you kill, if I kill Dave's enemy, if I kill Dave's soldiers, I'm gonna get two points for each of those. And if I cause Dave's soldiers to panic and run away, I get one point for each of those. 
So that's the victory point.